We've been using object declarations for a while now. After all, all of our applications had to go inside of an object declaration because the classes don't exist until you call new on them and the objects which create singleton objects just exist uh, on their own, basically. And we've also referred to companion objects, which we've said are object declarations that have the same name as a class. So we made a class called vec2d, we made an object called vec2d. Now in this case, all we put inside of it was main just so that we could do a little testing and see what it looked like. But there's actually a really good reason why we have companion objects and companion objects are used quite frequently inside of Scala. And they're used for a number of, of different things. The first thing you can do is anything that would be associated with this class but where every instance of the class doesn't need a copy of it would go inside of the companion object. If you had some type of, of data that was that was being used, it was associated with the VEC2Ds in general, but it can also be for certain methods. Um, one advantage of the companion object as to say some just random singleton object is the companion object actually has the ability to see the private members of its associated class and the class has the ability to see the private members of the companion object so giving them the same name actually does give you some capability now we've seen some usage of companion objects in the libraries for example list one two three we saw this before we saw it in the situation where we we're talking about the ply method and we said that that was actually short for for this where really this is invoking the apply method and passing it those arguments well the apply method is actually located in the companion object to list so there is a list class and there is a list companion object and this this apply method is in the companion object and what you're seeing here is a pattern that's used commonly in Scala which is that the apply method on the companion object is frequently used to give you the ability to construct new objects so you can call new on things like we did right here but you might have noticed there are lots of times in Scala where you create things and you don't call new and the reason you don't have to is because they have given you an apply method so we can make an apply method here that takes an x and a y and it winds up being just a new vec2d of x and y now what does that allow us to do well it means that we can do that we can get rid of the calls to new in fact we could get rid of the calls to new on all of these if we were so inclined we could make it so that we're always going through the companion object instead for creating these values we could do the same thing in our mutable version we could put an apply method in here def apply so x is a double y is a double it's a new mutable vec2d of x comma y and then we wouldn't need these other calls to new we can just create them by invoking the apply method on the companion object so what's the real benefit of this well the real benefit comes when we want to have multiple ways of constructing our object and we potentially want to limit the ability to pass in this information directly. Now it turns out that in this situation you know, we don't really care what X and Y are so it doesn't matter if any code calls this but if those needed to be constructed in some specific way you know, maybe the IDs on our customer or the IDs on our account right now we have no control over how these things are created but we could gain some control over it by putting you know, something in we could have an apply method down here and then there's one other step that we would need to do so let's go ahead and let's make an apply that we can use to create an account from here so we're going to we need to pass in a customer and an ID actually the idea here is I'm going to take this apply 
and I'm not going to pass in an ID. The idea here would be that I want to go from the bank. Here we had this next account number. I would wind up getting rid of the next account number there. I would make it so that the account object handled the next account number. Now, doing that is going to break a few things here, but we can fix them. So we'll set up our next account number there. And the reason that this winds up breaking is because we have this line, which we would then move over and now we're going to use the apply method to construct an account that way. So here we will increment that and we will return a new account of C comma next account number dot to string. Now Okay, I can almost hear viewers saying, but, but I didn't really change anything because we could still call this and this is just doing the same thing. You are correct. But by making it so the apply calls it, we can actually make it so that this constructor here is private. And the way we do that syntactically is before the argument list, I'm gonna put the keyword private. What that does is now if the bank tries to make an account directly, so if I tried to go new account and just to make this compile, I'll put in a null, this is now an error because the constructor cannot be accessed. By making it private, we have made it so that the only things that can create a new account are either the companion object or the account itself. And so we've gained yet another level of control the other reason why we would do this is the ability to have, we could have multiple apply methods. It turns out you can have multiple constructors. You can, if you def a method that's called this and you pass it arguments, it, wind, it has to wind up calling this constructor. So this isn't something that we do all that often. A better way if you want to have multiple ways to construct things is to use the companion object and have an apply method. So another way that we might want to build these would be possibly to, I don't know, take some uh, source maybe. Actually, let's call it uh, lines is an iterator of string. The idea here is that I'm reading this from some input file. And then this version would contain code that would go through and read strings off of this iterator and use that information to build an account. And so then, this would be for example, we have the ability to save things off and then read them back in. So then we have two versions of apply. And the handy thing here is that this version potentially does more work. That's the real benefit of having these apply methods is if you want to do some significant work to calculate whatever the arguments that you pass in are, Having it in the apply method makes sure that that work happens and it's always done in the correct way.